Hi, welcome back to Humpback Chronicles. Uh, I was talking to some friends uh, this week, and uh, a couple of people said that these are feel-good stories, and and I hope they are. Uh, I, I feel really good about where we are in in well research, what we're trying to do, and, and what we've done, and where we come from. And and this is supposed to be a mix of uh, stories of how we got to where we are, uh, what we're seeing now, and, and things we might do. Uh, both in Hawaii with humpback whales and some other stories to throw in. I, I hope you enjoy the ride. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a biologist. I really wanted to study snakes and lizards uh, that I chased around canyons at the time. And I remember my eighth grade science teacher telling me that with my academic skills, uh, I should probably do something else. Uh, he was right. I have great respect for the people that work out there day to day uh, learning about whales and dolphins. I feel lucky that with great support from National Geographic, I got to tell their stories, mostly from the perspective of being a great fan. I first worked with humpback whales in Maui in 1979 uh, with my father, Chuck Nicklin, on an IMAX film titled Nomads of the Deep. Uh, this is my dad with the 300-pound camera and probably my first real whale picture. Uh, and at that time, I had no idea where this all was going to lead. I came back to, to Maui in 1980 uh, to be a volunteer with Dr. Jim Darling. Uh, my job was going to be to go out and try to use my diving and photography skills to, number one, uh, dive under singing humpback whales and trying to find out their sex, and secondly, to take IDs of whale tails and help them with the catalog. This was a catalog of whale ID pictures that had been, in 1979, the previous year, matched with whale tail pictures from southeast Alaska, and it was the beginning of trying to figure out that the same whales we were seeing in Hawaii we were also seeing in southeast Alaska. Along the way, I was just shooting pictures of whales or any uh, whale behavior that just seemed interesting at the time. Maui was and is a, a great place to study whales and drew uh, people from all over. And many of these people went on to make their mark as important figures for conservation and management of whales in the future. Uh, Greg Silver went on to work with the Marine Mammal Commission. Uh, Beth Matthews was a professor at the University of Alaska. Mark Ferrari and Debbie Glockner Ferrari were studying uh, mothers and young uh, off of Maui. I went on to do that study for over 30 years. I was always impressed by the people who worked up on the hill in the hot sun, uh, charting the movement of whales, uh, identifying behaviors, and also uh, seeing what they were doing before we were there, while we were working with them after we left. In the white visors are Jim and Mary Bird, librarians from the Northeast. In the yellow shirt, uh, Karen Miller, who went on to work in the hotel business in Maui. A big part of all the work was, of course, getting IDs, knowing who the whales were so we weren't counting the same whale twice, and also knowing when we saw them in other places. Uh, one, one of the best, uh, Graham Ellis was out with family, Linda, uh, Jason, and uh, in a small boat in the hot sun. Gr Graham would go on to be a key figure working with uh, uh, Dr. John Ford, who also worked in Hawaii with us, looking at killer whales in western Canada. Maui is also a great place for trying new things. Uh, in the early 80s, hang gliding was really popular, and this is an underwater version where we had uh, scuba tanks inside the boat. The second stage is snaked down to uh, Jim Darling and Greg Silber, and they hooked themselves into an underwater trapeze setup. Uh, unfortunately, the system beat the heck out of you underwater and was only used once. Many other things we tried worked much better. Maui has been just a great place to work and a great place to study humpback whales. Uh, and as we look into the challenges of working in the future, it's been fun to see how far we've come and who's brought us there. I look forward to having morning coffee out off of Lahaina, waiting for a whale to come up and wondering, who knows what wonders wait. There are so many people to thank for getting us here, and since this episode is mostly the beginning, uh, I really want to thank uh, uh, that 
Tad and Cindy Lucky and Mike Bennett, who were running the first boat, I went whale watching on. And the late uh, Jim Lucky, head of the Lahaina Restoration Foundation at the time, and the man you'd go to see to uh, help researchers understand the intricacies of working in Lahaina. Uh, in the early days, uh, Connie Sutherland and, and her late husband, Chuck Sutherland, were at the Whaler Limited, and they were there to help researchers any way they could with a phone, with a fax machine, just always there to help. Uh, one of our boats is called the Charles B., after Charles B. Sutherland, and Connie has been very instrumental in keeping us on track uh, doing things with the community at Whale Tales. And Ron Roos from Roos Realty, who for over 40 years has helped us find places to put researchers in, uh, in West Maui. Thank you all. It's hard to put into words how thankful we are to all the people who have helped us over the years and continue to be important to us as, uh, as, as friends. Uh, uh, but thank you all. I'm trying to do this in a way that doesn't sound like a bad Academy Award speech, but uh, we'll try and put, put our, our feelings into words each week. Bye-bye.